Chapter 16, The Oral Cavity and Related Structures Question 1. You suspect that your patient has an enlarged submandibular salivary gland. You expect the enlarged gland a. to be palpable intraorally b. to be palpable extraorally c. to be palpable both intra and extraorally d. only to be detectable by radiographical examination. Correct answer is c. to be palpable both intra and extraorally. The submandibular gland has a superficial and deep lobe partially separated by the milhioid muscle, when enlarged both lobes should be palpable, the superficial lobe extraorally and the deep lobe intraorally. Question 2. During an inferior alveolar nerve block the needle ideally passes. a. Posterior and medial to medial pterygoid. b. Anterior and lateral to medial pterygoid. c through medial pterygoid d inferior to medial pterygoid correct answer is b anterior and lateral to medial pterygoid the medial pterygoid muscle forms the medial wall of the pterygoid space so the needle should be lateral to the muscle and anterior to its anterior border as it enters the space question 3 you notice that your patient's submandibular lymph nodes are enlarged you would look for potential infection sites in the a. hard palate b. hard palate and upper lip c. hard palate, upper lip and upper central incisor d. hard palate, upper lip, upper central incisor and lower first molar Correct answer is d. hard palate, upper lip, upper central incisor and lower first molar the submandibular lymph nodes drain a very wide area of the face and the oral cavity including most of the roof of the mouth and associated structures. The search for source of infection will be very wide if you are going to cover all eventualities. Question 4. You notice a lesion on the labial alveolar mucosa of the lower right lateral incisor tooth of one of your patients and decide to take a biopsy to send for oral pathology report which nerve would require local anesthesia in order to carry out a pain-free biopsy? A. The incisive nerve B. The mental nerve C. The buccal nerve D. The lingual nerve Correct answer is B. The mental nerve the labial mucosa is innervated by the mental nerve. The incisive nerve only supplies the lower anterior teeth, the lingual nerve supplies the lingual gingivae of all the lower teeth and the buccal nerve innervates the buccal gingivae of the lower posterior teeth. Question 5. The regional lymphatic drainage of the left side of the tip of the tongue is to the A. Left submental lymph node B left and right submental lymph nodes c left submandibular lymph node d left and right submandibular lymph nodes correct answer is b left and right submental lymph nodes the central fascia septum is deficient anteriorly and posteriorly the tip of the tongue therefore drains bilaterally into the closest lymph nodes the submental nodes Lymph will eventually reach the submandibular nodes on both sides. Question 6. A successful inferior alveolar nerve block will produce anesthesia of the A. Lower lip B. Lower lip and mandibular teeth C. Lower lip, mandibular teeth, and labial gingivae of the anterior mandibular teeth D lower lip, mandibular teeth, and labial gingivae of the anterior and buccal gingivae of the posterior mandibular teeth. Correct answer is C. Lower lip, mandibular teeth, and labial gingivae of the anterior mandibular teeth. An ID block will anesthetize all branches of the nerve peripheral to the point of injection, all the ipsilateral mandibular teeth together with the skin of the lower lip and the labial gingivae both supplied by the mental branch, should be anesthetic. The posterior buccal gingivae are supplied by the buccal nerve. Question 7. 
the mucosa of the hard palate is a carotenist and has submucosa and minor salivary glands posterolaterally. b non-carotenist and has submucosa and minor salivary glands posteromedially. c carotenist and lacks submucosa and minor salivary glands. d non-carotenist and lacks submucosa and minor salivary glands. Correct answer is a. Carotenist and has submucosa and minor salivary glands posterolaterally. The hard palate is subject to heavy masticatory load so is covered by tough carotenist masticatory mucosa as are the gingivae and dorsal surface of the tongue. There are minor salivary glands in the hard palate especially in the posterolateral areas. Question 8. A successful infraorbital nerve block will produce anesthesia of the A. Maxillary anterior teeth B. Maxillary anterior teeth and their labial gingivae C. Maxillary anterior teeth, their labial gingivae and the upper lip D. Maxillary anterior teeth, their labial gingivae, the upper lip and anterior hard palate Correct answer is C. Maxillary anterior teeth, their labial gingivae and the upper lip. The infraorbital nerve itself supplies the skin between the lower eyelid and upper lip including the labial gingivae of the anterior teeth. The upper anterior teeth are innervated by the anterior superior alveolar nerve which branches off the infraorbital nerve just inside the infraorbital canal. Question 9. In a patient with a normal healthy mouth, you would expect the mucosa covering the alveolar process supporting the mandibular teeth to be a. light pink in color on both sides of the mucogingival junction b. light pink below the mucogingival junction and red above it c. red below the mucogingival junction and light pink above it d. red on both sides of the mucogingival junction correct answer is c red below the mucogingival junction and light pink above it. The mucogingival junction marks the transition from keratinist gingivae around the cervical margins of the teeth to lining mucosa covering most of the alveolar processes of the maxillae and mandible. The thick curtainous layer produces a light pink color because small blood vessels are obscured whereas they show through the thinner lining mucosa producing a redder color. Red gingivae accompanied by swelling and bleeding when tooth brushing are indicative of gingivitis.